Namaste, Dandavat Pranam. By the instruction and grace of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj, we're here reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Canto 3, the status quo, chapter 22, text 33. Shabhariya Saprajakaman Bhubhujain Yavirodata Sanghi Yamana Sakirti Shastri Bisura Gayakai Pratyushe Shabhanu Padhena Pradashrin Vanharekata Emperor Svayambhuva Manu enjoyed life with his wife and subjects and fulfilled his desires without being disturbed by unwanted principles contrary to the process of religion. Celestial musicians and their wives sang in chorus about the pure reputation of the emperor, and early in the morning every day he used to listen to the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead with a loving heart. Purport. Human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in Krishna consciousness. There is no restriction against living with a wife and children, but life should be so conducted that one may not go against the principles of religion, economic development, regulated sense enjoyment, and ultimately liberation from material existence. The Vedic principles are designed in such a way that the conditioned souls who have come to this material existence may be guided in fulfilling their material desires and at the same time be liberated and go back to Godhead, back home. It is understood that Emperor Svayambhuva Manu enjoyed his household life by following these principles. It is stated here that early in the morning, there were musicians who used to sing with musical instruments about the glories of the Lord. And the emperor with his family personally used to hear about the pastimes of the Supreme Person. This custom is still prevalent in India in some of the royal families and temples. Professional musicians sing with uh, sanais, and the sleeping members of the house gradually get up from their beds in a pleasing atmosphere. During bedtime also, the singers sing songs in the relationship with pastimes of the Lord with Sinai accompaniment, and the householders gradually fall asleep remembering the glories of the Lord. In every house, in addiction, uh, in addition to the singing program, there is an arrangement for Bhagavatam lectures in the evening. Family members sit down, hold Hare Krishna Kirtan, hear narrations from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, and enjoy music before going to bed. The atmosphere created by the Sankirtan movement lives in their hearts, and while sleeping, they also dream of the singing and glorification of the Lord. In such a way, perfection of Krishna consciousness can be attained. This practice is very old, as learned from this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Millions of years ago, Svayambhuva Manu used to avail himself of this opportunity to live householder life in the peace and prosperity of a Krishna conscious atmosphere. As far as temples are concerned, in each and every royal palace or rich man's house, inevitably there is a nice temple and the members of the household rise early in the morning and go to the temple to see the Mangala Arti ceremony. The Mangala Arti ceremony is, first, uh, is the first worship of the morning. In the Arti ceremony, a light is offered in circles before the deities, as are conch shell and flowers and a fan. The Lord is supposed to rise early in the morning and take some light refreshment and give audience to the devotees. The devotees then go back to the house or sing the glories of the Lord in the temple. The early morning ceremony still takes place in Indian temples and palaces. Temples are meant for the assembly of the general public. Temples within palaces are especially for the royal families, but in many of these places, in many of these palace temples, the public is also allowed to visit. The temple of the king of Jaipur is situated within the palace but the public is allowed to assemble. If one goes there, he will see that the temple is always crowded with at least 500 devotees. After the Mangala Arti ceremony, they sit down together and sing the glories of the Lord 
with musical instruments and thus enjoy life. Temple worship by the royal family is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, where it is stated that those who fail to achieve success in bhakti yoga principles within one life are given a chance to take birth in the next life in a family of rich men or in a royal family or family of learned brahmanas or devotees. If one gets the opportunity to take birth in these families, he can achieve the facilities of a Krishna conscious atmosphere without difficulty. A child born in that Krishna, uh, in that Krishna atmosphere is sure to develop Krishna consciousness. The perfection which he failed to attain in his last life is again offered in this life, and he can make himself perfect without fail. Text 34. Nisnatam yoga mayasu, Munim svayam buvamanum, Yad abram saitum boga, Nashekor bagabat param. Thus, Vayam buvamanu was a saintly king. Although absorbed in material happiness, he was not dragged to the lowest grade of life, for he always enjoyed his material happiness in a Krishna conscious atmosphere. Purple. The kingly happiness of material enjoyment generally drags one to the lowest grade of life, namely degradation to animal life because of unrestricted sense enjoyment. But Svayambhuvamanu was considered as good as a saintly sage because the atmosphere created in his kingdom and home was completely Krishna conscious. The case is similar with the conditioned souls in general. They have come into this material life for sense gratification. But if they are able to create a Krishna conscious atmosphere as depicted here or as prescribed in revealed scriptures by temple worship and household deity worship, then in spite of their material enjoyment, they can make advancement in pure Krishna consciousness without a doubt. At the present moment, modern civilization is too much attached to the material way of life or sense gratification. Therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement can give the people in general the best opportunity to utilize their human life in the midst of material enjoyment. Krishna consciousness does not stop them in their propensity for material enjoyment, but simply regulates their habits in the life of sense enjoyment. In spite of their enjoying the material advantages, they can be liberated in this very life by practicing Krishna consciousness by the simple method of chanting the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Text 35. Ayata Yamas Tasya San, Yamas Vantara Yapana, Shrinvato Jayato Vishnu, Korvato Bruva Takata. Consequently, although his duration of life gradually came to an end, his long life consisting of a Manvantara era, was not spent in vain since he ever engaged in hearing, contemplating, writing down, and chanting the pastimes of the Lord. Purpur. As freshly prepared food is very tasteful, but if kept for three or four hours becomes stale and tasteless, so the existence of material enjoyment can endure as long as life is fresh. But at the fag end of life, everything becomes tasteless and everything appears to be vain and painful. The life of Emperor Svayambhuvamanu, however, was not tasteless as he grew older. His life remained as fresh as in the beginning because he uh, continued Krishna consciousness. The life of a man in Krishna consciousness is always fresh. It is said that the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening, and its business is to reduce the duration of everyone's life. But the sunrise and sunset cannot diminish the life of one who engages in Krishna consciousness. Svayambhuvamanu's life did not become stale after some time, for he engaged himself always in chanting about the meditating. Uh, he always engaged himself in chanting about and meditating upon Lord Vishnu. He was the greatest yogi because he never wasted his time. It is especially mentioned here, Vishnu Korvato Bhuvatakata. When he talked, he talked only of Krishna and Vishnu, the personality of Godhead. When he heard something, it was about Krishna. When he meditated, it was upon Krishna and his activities. It is stated that his life was very long, 71 yugas. One yuga is uh, completed in about 4,320,000 years. 
71 of such yugas is the duration of the life of a Manu, and 14 such Manus come and go in one day of Brahma. For the entire duration of his life, 4,320,000 times 71 years, Manu engaged in Krishna consciousness by chanting, hearing, talking about, and meditating upon Krishna. Therefore, his life was not wasted, nor did it become stale. 36. Saevam svantaram ninye yuganam eka saptatim vasudeva prasangena paributa gati traya. He passed his time, which lasted 71 cycles of the four ages, 71 times 4,320,000 years, always thinking of Vasudeva and always engaged in matters regarding Vasudeva. Thus, he transcended the three destinations. Purport. The three destinations are meant for persons who are under the control of the three modes of material nature. These destinations are sometimes described as the awakened, dreaming, and unconscious stages. In Bhagavad Gita, the three destinations are described as the destinations of persons in the modes of goodness, passion, and ignorance. It is stated in the Gita that those who are in the mode of goodness are promoted to better living conditions in the higher planets, and those who are in the mode of passion remain within this material world on the earth or on heavenly planets. But those who are in the mode of ignorance are degraded to animal life on planets where life is lower than human. But one who is Krishna conscious is above these three modes of material nature. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that anyone who engages in devotional service to the Lord automatically becomes transcendental to the three destinations of material nature and is situated in the Brahma Bhuta or the self-realized stage. Although Svayam Bhuvamanu, the ruler of this material world, appeared to be absorbed in material happiness, he was neither in the mode of goodness nor in the modes of passion or ignorance, but in the transcendental stage. Therefore, one who fully engages in devotional service is always liberated. Bilvamangala Thakur, a great devotee of the Lord, stated, if I have unflinching devotion to the lotus feet of Krishna, then mother liberation is always engaged in my service. The complete perfection of material enjoyment, religion, and economic development is at my command. People are after dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Generally, they perform religious activities to achieve some material gain, and they engage in material activity for sense gratification. After being frustrated in material sense gratification, one wants to be liberated and become one with the absolute truth. These four principles form the transcendental path for the less intelligent. Those who are actually intelligent engage in Krishna consciousness, not caring for these four principles of the transcendental method. They, are at, once, uh, they at once elevate themselves to the transcendental platform, which is above liberation. Liberation is not a very great achievement for a devotee, to say nothing of the results of ritualistic performances in religion, economic development, or the materialistic life of sense gratification. Devotees do not care for these. They are situated always on the transcendental platform of the Brahma Bhutta stage of self realization. 37. Sarira mana sadivya. Therefore, O Vidura, how can persons completely under the shelter of Lord Krishna in devotional service be put into miseries pertaining to the body, the mind, nature, and other men and living creatures? Purport. Every living entity within this material world is always afflicted by some kind of miseries pertaining either to the body, the mind, or natural disturbances. The stresses due to cold in winter and severe heat in summer always inflict miseries on the living entities in this material world. But one who has completely taken shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord in Krishna consciousness is in the transcendental stage. He is not disturbed by any miseries, either due to the body, the mind, or natural disturbances of summer and winter. He is transcendental to all these miseries. 38. 
Varmananha vidhan chuban, Yanam varnashramanam cha, Sarvabhuta hita sada. In reply to questions asked by certain sages, he, Svayambhuva Manu, out of compassion for all living entities, taught the diverse sacred duties of men in general and the different varnas and ashrams. 39. Etatta adi rajasya manos charitam adbutam varnitam varnani yasya tad apatyodayam shunu. I have spoken to you of the wonderful character of Svayambhuva Manu, the original king, whose reputation is worthy of description. Please hear as I speak of the flourishing of his daughter, Devahuti. Thus end the Bhakti Vedanta purports of the third canto, 22nd chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled The Marriage of Kardama Muni and Devahuti. And thus ends our reading for today. We will continue from chapter 23, Devahuti's Lamentation, on Wednesday. Jai Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Sri Pad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Shri Prabhupada, Shri Guru Maharaj, Shri Guru Dev, Shri Acharya Dev, Shri Shanta Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai. Of course, to the devotees, of course, to the worldwide devotees, Sama Bhakti Veda Vrinda Ki Jai. Jai Nabhadwe Dham Ki Jai, Nishingapali Dham Ki Jai, Marapur Dham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Bade Subhadra Jagannath Chu Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Giri Govind Gupta Govind Dham Ki Jai, Sham Kun Radha Kun Ki Jai, Tulsi Devi Bhakti Devi, Vrinda Devi Ki Jai, Jai Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Jai Harinam Sankirtan Yagi Ki Jai, Scientific Sankirtan Yagi Ki Jai, Princeton Bhakti Vedanta Institute Kijai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Institute Kijai Shri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Kijai. Jai. Lord Varaha Avir Bhav Mahotsav Kijai. Jai. Nithai Gaur Premanandi Hari 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 Bhav. Shri Mati Umadevi Dasi Kijai. Hari Bhav. Sri Pat Krishna Kesa Prabhu Ji Kijai. Dandavad Pranam Siddhi. Dandavad.